Hello friends, welcome to Shauna Stitches. I'm Shauna and this is my crafty podcast where I talk about all the things that I've been working on lately. Today is August the 20th and this is episode number 76. I still don't know where this year is going and I'm just five days from my birthday. So yay, uh, another year older. Thank you to everyone who is watching and your likes, subscriptions, and comments mean the world to me, so thank you so much for that, and I'm happy that you're here with me. I am drinking some coffee out of this beautiful hand potted, is that how you say it? <laughs> hand pottery? I don't know. Uh, I got this at a um, fiber festival last year. I love it, although it's it's quite large. I think it's the size of my head. Still on graveyard shift. It's nighttime. It is nine o'clock, so I'm kind of just waking up. I guess I got up around five. So I have one finished object to show you. My Desert Vista Dye Work socks are done. This is the colorway Happy Birthday Cupcake, which was very fitting for my birthday month. And that is eight projects done in the first eight months of the year using Desert Vista Dye Works yarn. Four more, and I will qualify for the exclusive skein that, uh, I think her name's Susan, Susan of Desert Vista Dye Works gives away to people who complete the entire year. So that's really exciting. Um, it's really cool because on the label, she puts like whatever number your skein is out of how many. So if there's a hundred, you know, and you're, you got skein 20, 20 of a hundred. So it's, it's like really exclusive. Very cool. Uh, nothing too exciting to say about these, except you won't believe this. This is the only knitting I have to show you. I'm not showing any knitting works in progress. Nothing. Uh, I have been very busy, just not knitting. Very weird for me. Um... Let me show you a work in progress. If you'll remember right, I showed this. This is a, I think it's 48, 49 grams of hand spun singles. This is Malabrigo Nube in, I forget the, the colorway name. It will be in the show notes. Uh, and everything else will be down below as well. So I have a link to all my Ravelry project pages. And if there isn't anything covered in there, then please feel free to ask and I will be happy to find the answer for you. So I did complete another little singles ball. This one I think is 48 grams. And you'll notice I wound this one differently. I wound this on a, I think it's called Nostapine. Nostapine, I'm not sure. It's a big wooden stick is what it is. So I'm up to close to 100 grams of singles, which means I have somewhere like 140 to go. And confession time, I have not been spinning. It's been like a week since I touched my spindle. And that makes me a little bit sad, but I will tell you why. <laughs> I have gone down two rabbit holes lately and they've been keeping me very busy. Actually three, three rabbit holes, very busy. So let's see, the next thing that I have to tell you about, I feel like I'm gonna fly right through this podcast. Let's talk about some sewing. So I decided I wanted to make a large project bag. I reached out to Kristen of Vullenvine. She has a podcast channel and also a yarn dyeing company. And I mentioned that if she was ever bored and needed a topic, I would love to see a bag making tutorial. So she was nice enough to uh, answer that and made a tutorial, which is on YouTube, for making bags. So I did not follow hers exactly. I kind of mishmashed hers and another um, tutorial that I, I can link down below. And I came out with this. So this is the first one I made. It's huge. I cut the fabric widthwise to 20 and a half, which means this should be about 20 inches wide. And 13 and a half was the depth. <clears throat> So on this one, I did a very large boxed bottom. I cut 
each part to three inches. So I don't know if that means this is six inches. I'm not good with sewing. Uh, a little fun fact, I failed geometry. So I'm terribly afraid of cutting straight lines and getting shapes to fit together. I don't know why, it's very challenging for me. So the fact that I have a bag that, I mean, it looks pretty square and, oops, helps if you go the right side, and a zipper that works. I just can't even believe it. Um, I have tried to make project bags once before and kind of had mixed um, results. They all worked, but they just weren't the best. And uh, one thing that was really different about the second tutorial, not Kristen's, but the other one, if this doesn't show it as well, let me see. This one shows it really well. Uh, let's see. There's a second one. I'll go into the, di the differences there, but uh, it has these little zipper tabs, that little pink part there, and there's a white one over here. It's just not as easy to see. Also, I didn't poke my corner out very well. I kind of learned that as I went. So I should say this is the first bag that I made, and I used interfacing. The material is already a upholstery fabric so it's cotton but it's a it's thicker than like a quilting cotton so that with the interfacing made for a very thick very sturdy bag like this thing will for sure stand up on its own and I didn't know any better I didn't know if it would be better or worse without the interfacing but I did come to find out I prefer this fabric at least without interfacing the other thing that I didn't love as much is the lining fabric is very thin. Of course, that's two layers thick. I don't know if it gives any kind of idea as to just how thin it is, but I would probably go for something just a bit more substantial. But you know what? It's it's all about learning. It's a learning curve. Sorry, I'm really itchy. I don't know if I have an allergic reaction to something, but like I itch everywhere probably TMI, but if you see me like scratching, I, I just can't help it. I don't know what's going on. Uh, I've, I've started a different uh, over-the-counter sleep medication, but I think it's just making me itchy and also not helping me sleep. So life problems. Anyway, back to the bag. So like I said, I cut this one to three inches, making for a very, very wide box bottom. You can see it's like the size of my hand, but that will make like a nice deep bag I guess. Uh, the next one was this one. This is bag number two. I still use the interfacing but I cut a two and a half inch or was it two? This might have been two. Now I'm forgetting. I think this was two inch bottom. So you can see that made quite a difference in the size. And I just love this fabric. This is so pretty. And with the green zipper, it just, it matches perfectly. Who am I? I don't know. This is amazing. Uh, I love the little pink tab right there. It's so pretty. And by the way, those tabs are so easy. I did not find sewing in the zipper to be the easiest. And I'm, if I'm honest, none of these bags are perfect. Can you see that little wrinkle there? Something about, I think it was something about how thin that fabric is, and also the zipper foot, I think. It seemed like the outer fabric and the lining fabric kind of fed in at a different rate, or the lining fabric sort of stretched. I don't know, but each time I would get those little buckles. It's not the end of the world. It still works just fine, and it isn't even that noticeable, but still, I know it's there. Uh, it was just kind of frustrating. So if anyone is a sewist, sewer, sewing person, I don't know what you call it, I think sewist, uh, and you could give me any recommendations on why that's happening or how to avoid it, that'd be great. The one thing I noticed is with my zipper foot, you're supposed to be able to reach in, you just lift the presser foot, reach in and unzip the zipper while it's there to move past where you're sewing. I had to take the zipper foot off every single time and that was a real pain in the butt. But we have a zipper that works again. Amazing. So those are the first two. 
and uh, both of them are interfaced. I can't remember if I said that. This one for sure. This one is also interfaced. But those are the last two. Then I decided I wanted to see how it would change without the interfacing. Um, also, side note, I'm going to give this one to my mom. All right. Uh, this one is for me, I think. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's a gift. I haven't decided yet. The third one I made was this one. And I believe I did the two inch bottoms again. Well, no, maybe this one's an inch and a half. I don't know. I should have made some notes because if I ever want to sew them again, I'm not going to remember. That looks smaller than the white one, I think. So probably an inch and a half. And it makes that, it means that the bag looks taller, but it's just not as wide. I guess technically it should still be the same volume, right? That's a geometry word. I might know what it means. <laughs> it should mean that it holds the same amount of stuff, I think. Uh, anyway, not much to say because it is the same fabric. Cut all to the same dimensions other than those box bottoms. 20 and a half wide by 13 and a half long, which means if my seams are exact quarter inches, which no guarantee, it should mean that the bag is 20 inches wide and 13 inches long. Except I don't know how the box bottom changes the height because clearly it does because it would be like 13 from that seam. I don't know. So you can see this one has um, more drape, if you will. This one would not stand up on its own. It would be a puddle. And that being said, I, I don't know. I just like the way this feels better. And I don't think I really need it to stand up on its own. If it has a project in it, it should stand up just fine. And it would be foldable. So I'm going to keep that one for me. And then I have one more. It is just the white fabric again with the green zipper and the beautiful pink flowers. This is just, I don't know, I love them both. I can't quite decide which one I like better. I love the green and pink on this. Like that is just such a perfect color combo to me, but I love the movie flowers on this one. Uh, this one again does not have interfacing and I just decided not to use interfacing on any of the rest of them because I just think they're a bit nicer. I mean, it's nice that they stand up, I guess, on their own, but um, not necessary. All right, so that was four large sweater blanket size bags that I sewed. I think I did all those in one night. Like it was a very, not frantic, but it was just like, just keep going, going. And once I got kind of a rhythm down, I batch sewed them so I'd do one part of the process and prep all that and then sew that part of it and then prep the next part on all of them and sew it. So I had a fabric left over and I still have fabric left over and so I made six more. <laughs> these are tinier. Um, I'm trying to remember what I cut these to. 12 or 13 wide total by 10. I think it ends up being 13 by 10. So this is a nice, I guess, sock size or small shawl. Let's see. I have some finished objects from last time in here. I've got my um, pressed flowers hat, a pair of socks, another pair of socks, and uh, it's pretty full. room to spare. So yes, I think a small shawl would fit in here or socks for sure. Uh, the one thing that Kristen did on her bags that I wish I could have done on mine is she adds a day ring and a lobster clasp handle. I would love to do that, but the store I was at did not have that kind of hardware and I didn't feel like going to another store. So I just made them without. In the future, if I sew more, I will do that. Uh, if you notice, I got better at doing those little zipper tabs and I actually poked out my corners. The other ones are kind of like dimpled in. I figured it out. Uh, trial and error. So I have three of those. 
all pretty much the same except for, you know, I didn't try to cut my fabric any certain way. I didn't, you know, place this in the center. I just put it where it went and I think it's beautiful. So some of those are going to be gifts and I will be keeping one for myself. And then I made same size. I know I cut these to an inch and a quarter. Let me show you. The box bottom, I might do an inch and a half next time. I don't know. I just, maybe again, if somebody actually has some sewing knowledge, they can enlighten me. I, I don't know how you figure out how to, what size to do that. It doesn't seem like it matters a lot. One thing I am super proud of, I don't know if you're going to, do you see? Do you see that perfect? Like all four little pieces line up. It's so, like, that is the hardest part. When I sewed bags before, which I looked, was in 2016, uh, that was not happening. Those seams were not lining up at all. But uh, I just happened to have three of these dark pink zippers that I used on these and three light pink zippers that I used on these from when I was trying to make bags before. So I'm happy I kept those. And again, I have three of them total. And I will be keeping one and gifting one. And I'm going to gift one to you guys. So I, I can't say if it will be this bag or one of the other yellow ones. Um, but I would like to do a giveaway on my channel. Again, remember, these are not perfect. Actually, this one looks pretty good. Maybe this will be the giveaway one. I'm not seeing that bunching. Maybe there's one little spot of some bunching, not bad. And the zipper totally works. So if you would like to win a sock, small shawl, hat size project bag, then enter below. Let's see, what can I, what can I have the prompt be? How about the color yellow? Include the color yellow in your comment. And the next episode that I record, I will pick a winner and I'm trying to think. I will ship it anywhere. I'll ship it overseas. This should be really light and shouldn't be difficult to ship because I should be able to fold it in half and put it in a soft envelope. It shouldn't be a big deal. I say that now. It'll be like $50 to ship it somewhere. So yes, uh, have you tried to make project bags before? Do you have any tips or tricks for me? I feel like they came out pretty good, better than I could have expected. All right, so that was one rabbit hole. The next rabbit hole I went down has to do with sewing as well. Like who the heck am I? I do have a sewing machine, obviously I did not sew those by hand, but, Sewing has never been, I don't know, a true love of mine. Like I said, straight lines are very hard. Cutting exact shapes are very hard. And I don't know why. I, I see other people do it. I watch all these tutorials and people make it seem like it's so obvious and easy. And somehow I did not get that in my DNA. It is the hardest thing for me. That being said... I have this cute little stack here of some squares. This is a quilt pattern that's scrappy by Terry Rowland. And she came, I, I don't know of her. I was watching Kate of The Last Homely House and she was talking about making this scrappy color wash quilt and no, my colors are all messed up. I think that's right. Um, so for this, you don't have to be exact. And she referenced Terry Rowland's YouTube video. She has three videos that talk about different steps of making this quilt. And you're supposed to use all scraps, which I don't have quilting cotton scraps. I don't have fabric scraps, nothing like that. So I went on Etsy and I found, I think it's a quilt shop that sells their scraps, and I ordered five pounds of scraps. They all came in long strips, kind of like a jelly roll, except for the size varies from color to color, and I am making 
one square of each color and the only thing I'm trying to do is make sure that the center has good contrast. This one reminds me of a kitchen scrubby. You know the little sponges with the green scrubby side and the soft spongy side? <laughs> it cracks me up. Uh, so I will put a picture in of all 48 that I have made so far. And I, I'm not going to go through each one one by one, but uh, the one thing I will point out is that you'll notice like the insides are different sizes. It's not necessarily squared up. Um, like you can see this strip here is wider than, than this one. And that's okay because you cut all of your beginning sections larger than they should be. And then you cut everything down to three and a half inches square, which I feel like I'm doing. Again, I am not super confident with my cutting, but it seems to be working. So I have done 48 squares, and I don't know how many I'm going to make total, but if I remember right, and I will put in uh, Terry Rowland's picture of her first color wash quilt. It is so beautiful. I think she said something like 620 or 600 and something. So I have a long way to go. Um, hopefully I can keep up the steam. I have only made it through one bag of my scraps and not like not all of the scraps. I've just cut one block of each color so far and I have a lot more to go. So I think five pounds is going to be enough to make the quilt. When I ordered that, I had no clue. Like how much does a quilt top weigh? How I, I have no idea. These are things I just don't know. The other thing I really want to do after I finish this, and I'm being very ambitious because I say finish like it's a no-brainer. I'm going to finish it. That may or may not happen, but I hope so because I really like the look of it. I would love to have some homemade quilts and... I just think they're so nice and cozy. In my head, every time I start making a blanket or a quilt, I always think I want it to be king size so it can fit on my bed. But with this one, I don't think I'm going to be that ambitious. I plan on doing the top quilting with my sewing machine, which is the Singer One. I know nothing about sewing machines, and Glenn bought it for me, my husband, so um, it seems to be doing the trick for me. I know it's not top of the line, but I don't think it's bottom of the line either. But that being said, you can't fit a ginormous quilt in, I think they call it the throat, the piece that's, so you have the top of the sewing machine, the side, and then the bottom. I think that piece in the middle is called the throat, or I'm wrong and I made that up. But, um, you can only fit so much fabric in there. All right, so that was rabbit hole number two. I've already cut like another 20 squares that need to be sewn together and I'm gonna cut some more and then I'm still kind of doing that batch process. So I cut a bunch, then I sew a bunch, then I iron them and then I cut them out to the three and a half inch size. Okay, next rabbit hole and last rabbit hole I think is Something you have already seen. I'm trying to figure out how to show this. It is my Crochet Maya's Meadow Blanket. And I think I'm just going to have to show them one at a time. So I've finished uh, each petal. This is clue one or section one, week one. Um, you make six of each petal. So that is done. Six of the pink one done. Six of the blue done, and six of the purple. So I weighed all these because uh, if you watched my State of the Stash or maybe my last podcast, but definitely State of the Stash, I talked about how much yarn those big balls of yarn added or how much grams that added into my stash. Just clue one is 397 grams. So I don't count that out of my stash till it's done. That's motivation to finish, which this is a large reason why I didn't have any knitting and then I fell down the rabbit holes and that's the other reason I don't have any knitting. Um, but that being said, I got started on clue two and I have one finished of each 
color. They, they changed up the colors, although it's really just sort of using the colors in a different way. So we have this one. And this petal is both easier and harder than <laughs> Clue One. Uh, we're doing back post double crochets. So that's easy, but it's just a bit time consuming. But the effect that it gives where it, it gives that color overlap is really pretty. So there's that. There is this one. And this one might be my favorite. This is the first time we're adding in yellow. The first petals did not have any yellow in them. And this one. So I have one of each done and I have the centers for all of them. So kind of like the last one, how I said I was sewing in batches, I was doing this in batches. And uh, just after I got my colors down, I did one of each just so I could remember for the next ones. And because I did screw up, Where, which one was it? This one here, I had finished. And then I got to the end and I realized that instead of this sort of medium pink, I'd use the light pink. And that was wrong. So I thought about keeping it, but in the end I ripped it out and went with it. So this is very time consuming. It has taken a lot of my time. Although, like I said, now I'm kind of on this quilt kick. So if you did not watch my last episode, I will put a picture of what that's going to look like in here. Uh, the difference is the example is knit out of knit. It's crocheted out of fingering weight and I'm using DK weight. So mine should be huge, which I'm totally here for. Maybe it will fit my king size bed. We shall see. All right. I think that's all the crafty business that we have to talk about and life stuff. Uh, it's been busy. Summer is definitely coming to a wrap up, which I'm very happy about. We've had some cooler, crisper mornings. It's starting to feel a bit like fall. I will be that basic person and tell you that fall is my favorite season. And I just love the super crisp mornings and then where it still like warms up during the day and it gets crisp again at night. I just, that is my perfect weather. A little bit of sun, a little bit of cool, all the good things. Uh, we are really needing some rain around here. I'm sure that's coming. If we believe Far Farmer's Almanac, they say that we are in for a lot of snow here in the Pacific Northwest this year. I don't know. I feel like I always hear these predictions for what's coming and then by the time we're in that season, I forget. So I don't know if it's usually accurate or not, but if we get a lot of snow here, that will be interesting. As I said in the intro, I'm just five days away from my birthday and lucky me, I managed to be able to take a little bit of time off of work. Let's see. I have, I think a week, a whole week. So I'm working Monday and Tuesday and then I'm off until the following Wednesday. So yeah, Wednesday to Wednesday. I'm gonna be getting a new tattoo, which I'm excited about. Um, it's a new tattoo, but it's also a cover up of an old tattoo, which I've not done before. And the tattoo artist told me that he thinks it will take probably three sessions to completely cover. So it's interesting. I usually don't have something super specific in my mind anyway. Uh, like I have this tattoo and I think I just said I wanted uh, dahlias. So got some dahlias and it wasn't like I had specifics of the exact design. So with a cover up, I'm even more sort of at the will of the tattoo artist and also of the existing design. So all I've said is that I want it to be floral and whatever will cover. So uh, interesting, I have many tattoos. I've never done a cover up. And with this one, I don't regret the tattoo I got. I just regret where I put it on my body. So I will be much happier to have flowers visible to other people than what I currently have. So 
what else? My birthday week, I, of course, I'm going to do a lot of crafting, I hope, but I do have some house stuff I really want to get done. Anytime I have kind of a staycation, I always set these goals. One of the goals is I would like to rearrange my craft room a little bit. You may have heard me talk about it before, but my craft room used to just be exclusively a craft room. And then we put a home gym in the room that used to be our guest room. So now the guest bed from that room is now in my craft room. And the bedrooms in this house are not huge. And it's just very, like if you could see beyond what you can see here, it's a mess. So I'm hoping to rearrange some of that. One of the things I definitely want to do, I think, is pack up my loom. I bought an Ashford loom. Is it 24 inches, I think, plus the stand? And it sits in here and it just takes up room. It was not inexpensive. But so far, I just have not gotten into weaving. So I know I don't want to get rid of it. But I think I'm going to tear it down, put it in a box, put it in the garage. That way, the next time I want to have it, I will be able to get it out. But it's not something I gravitate toward. It's not something I reach for. The main issue I don't get rid of it is because I know the minute I do, I'm going to be like, oh, maybe I'd like to do some weaving. And so I think in total, I spent something like a thousand to twelve hundred dollars buying the loom, the stand, uh, the reeds that go with it, just a bunch of other accessories. So for that kind of money on a whim of, you know, possibly wanting to do it again in the future, I'm not ready to get rid of it, but I'm ready for it to quit taking up so much room. Uh, that, and then I want to reposition the bed, uh, hopefully open up a little more floor space, maybe move one of the bookshelves out of this room. So that, and then I want to go through all my clothes and get rid of things that don't fit and aren't going to be fitting anytime soon. You might have noticed uh, maybe on Instagram that I have been posting some more kind of fitness related stuff. And honestly, in the last like week or two, I haven't been working out, but uh, I need to get back to it. But that being said, I have managed to lose about eight pounds, which makes me very happy have a long way to go to get where I would like to be, but it's progress. So yes, I, I have some clothes though that I think no matter how much I could possibly lose, I'm never going to be that size again. And it's just taking up room in my house, which I don't appreciate. Years ago, I had some jeans that were my absolute favorite jeans, and I had gained weight. They didn't fit anymore, but I saved them, and then I lost a substantial amount of weight. I was able to wear them again, and I put these jeans on, and it's funny how fashion trends change because I put these, what used to be my absolute favorite, like enough to hold on and move several times, and I put them on. I was like, oh, these are hideous. <laughs> Why is that? Uh, and I would not, I like, I'm not a fashionable person at all, but clearly my own personal style had changed enough that it just wasn't doing it for me. So yes, I think that's most of my house goals. I would like to probably clean the garage too, but now I'm feeling ambitious for the time that I have. It always ends up going by so fast. So many things I want to get done and I will be switching my schedule to be on a day shift schedule and then having to switch back to nights when I go back to work. So there's going to be a bit of adjustment too. Uh, that being said, I think that's all of my news and hopefully I will talk to you again very soon. Uh, if nothing else, I would love to get another episode up during that time. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really am so happy to have you all here. And if you have any questions, comments, or things that I didn't answer for you, leave them down below and I will answer that. Thank you so much. I will talk to you all soon. Bye.